Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Emily and I like to make DIY design content on a budget. Make sure to subscribe down below if you're interested in seeing more full-length videos like these on my YouTube. And if you want to see more daily posts, you can go to my TikTok and follow me on there and on my Instagram where I do a lot of polls and do a lot of decision making for my projects so you can have a say in what I do. For today's video, I wanted to share with you guys 10 of my favorite tips and tricks for DIYing on a budget. I've gotten a lot of different questions, so I'm hoping that this video will address a few different areas. I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but my first tip is Facebook Marketplace, and I cannot recommend this for you guys enough. First off, you can sell on Facebook Marketplace, so if you don't have a budget, you can make yourself a budget. Literally anything sells on Facebook Marketplace, even if it's a really, really old furniture item that you don't think anyone would want, you'd be surprised. Basically all of the new furniture that I got from my parents' house when I did the renovation was from Facebook Marketplace. I really didn't buy any new furniture. <laughs> my favorite piece that I got was actually the little settee seating area that I got from my dad for the cafe. He uses it every single day now. It's his favorite area in the house and it fit perfectly into the little nook that I needed. And I got it for, I think, $25 or $30. You can get super creative with the different things that you can find for free off Facebook Marketplace. For instance, we were looking for a way to make a porch for my parents' house. And we were initially looking into different slates and stuff. We actually came across these wood shoring blocks that were pressure treated and they were for free. So even though they're not technically what is used to make a porch, we saw that they were pressure treated. So we hopped on that and we got them. We stained them, protected them, and they made a perfect porch area that is super unique for my parents' house and they love it. They also use that every day now. I encourage you to keep an open mind and you will find things that you never knew you could find. My second tip is actually kind of building off of the first tip, stumps. People who aren't woodworkers tend to stay away from that type of thing, but let me tell you, you can straight up just use a stump. You can get them for free off of Facebook Marketplace you can find them in your yard. All you have to do is sand it down and then I would coat it in a layer of polyurethane or polyacrylic. We did this for my parents' porch. We used a really big stump for that, but you can also get really skinny ones and make side tables out of it. My third tip is to not be scared to upcycle. I know me personally, when I was first jumping in, I was super scared of upcycling furniture because I didn't want to ruin it, I didn't want it to chip, and I didn't think that I had the ability to. Some really quick little tips on how to upcycle if you're a beginner. All you have to do is just sand it down, get a can of spray paint, um, literally any shade that you want, make sure that it is good to use for whatever type of material you'll be using it on, and after you spray paint the piece you can just use some polyacrylic over it. They have matte polyacrylic, they have semi-gloss and gloss, so depending on what sheen you want. And that's literally all you have to do. You can take any furniture piece that you already have or just a furniture piece that you found and really like and you can turn it into something so cool. My fourth tip is to try to upcycle things that you already have laying around. So sometimes when you go into redesigning mode, it can be really easy to just throw everything you have away and that can be so bad for the environment. So I try to recommend to not do that if possible. One of my favorite upcycling DIYs that I've done so far, I actually posted a few days ago on my TikTok. All I did was take one of those lamps that I feel like everyone already has in their house, maybe college dorm or just cause it's super inexpensive, add some wooden dowels, spray paint it, and you've got an entirely new lamp. It's so customizable and it looks like a million bucks. My fifth tip is to explore different wood options. You can go to your local Lowe's, you can go to your local lumber yard or any place like that and just walk around, see what they have. A lot of wood projects can be done without power tools. Some of my favorite wood projects that I've done, the first one was for my parents' house. We took their coffee table that was all scratched up on the top and we put some wood pieces on top that we literally just bought from Lowe's had them cut them to the size we needed, and then we just put it on top, stained it, and it came out 
wonderfully. Another DIY that I did was recently for my DM DIY series on my TikTok. Definitely make sure to go check it out if you want to see the little backstory of why I did that project. But for that project, we found these really thin little pieces of wood at Lowe's that were super inexpensive and they could be cut with a little tiny saw and miter tool that you can get that is not a power tool. So if you're scared of power tools, you don't need it. All you need to do is just cut the thin wood into any shapes that you want and you can put it onto your wall. So we did this cool structure over Dylan's desk and I sent some different design recommendations to Cynthia, who is the girl who DM'd me. All you have to do is just cut the wood and you can choose to stain it or paint it however you want and then paste it to your wall and you're basically done. It's super easy. You could do an entire textured wall on your own if you wanted to for super inexpensive. Kind of building off of that last tip, my sixth tip is to use strips of mounting tape instead of getting command strips. It's kind of a small thing, but I never knew the power of mounting tape until I got some for this recent DIY project that we did. And the cost difference is so huge, you guys. That tape can hold a whole lot of stuff and it doesn't rip off any paint or anything like that when you take it off. My seventh tip is for fake plants. So fake plants can do so much for your space. If you have kind of a drab space and you put some fake plants in there, it can really bring it to life. And you can't really expect someone that you're designing for to keep up with plants that you put in there. A little tip for you guys to find fake plants. First off, obviously is to thrift them or Facebook marketplace them. Really great places to find fake plants. But another tip that I have is Michael's. They are currently having a 70% off sale. I went there the other day and I got so many different plants that I'm going to use for my parents' office and got them for like a couple dollars. I would just keep a lookout in general for end of season sales like this because that's when you can really stock up on all the different plants and stuff that you'll need for all of your different design projects. My eighth tip for you guys is to use placemats for your pillows. So I used to do this all the time when I was younger. I would just take two placemats and sew them together and then I just stuff them with some polyfill or something. But I recently actually found on TikTok a girl who realized that a lot of placemats have like those two layers to them. So all you have to do is just cut a little slit in between the layers stuff that with your polyfill and then close it up with some glue or sew it off if you are able and then you have a throw pillow for like three to five dollars which is absolutely insane because throw pillows nowadays are like 25 to 30 dollars for one pillow if i can find that tiktok that i'm talking about then i'm gonna link it in the description down below so you guys can see it and my ninth tip may be kind of taboo for some people, but I'm going to share it anyways. I know a lot of people don't like white walls, but let me explain to you why I think this is the best budget option. Firstly, if you have them mix a color into your paint, there's an extra charge for that. And if you're painting your entire house at once like we did, that's gonna build up really, really fast. On top of that, having bright colors on your wall like white can really reflect the light in your space. So if you have a really, really small room or a really, really dark room and you don't have many ways to get light in or you can't really find ways to make it look bigger, white paint is gonna be your best friend because it reflects all of the light that is coming in there. Obviously there's other tricks that you can use if you're not a fan of white paint, like adding a whole lot of mirrors or something like that. If your space is really dark and gloomy, then it really won't end up looking like white paint. It'll end up looking like a gray or a tan, depending on what shade of lighting you use. You can get the same brand gallons of paint in white from Walmart for like $10 cheaper than you can get it anywhere else. So I also recommend checking out Walmart before you check out all of your home improvement stores for good paint prices. And my last tip, kind of building off of that last one as well, is to use an edge guard. I only started to use an edge guard like halfway through painting my parents' house, which I wish that I had started it sooner because it was such a game changer. It takes so much time 
to tape off every surface in your house and it also costs money to buy all the different rolls of tape that you need so if you have an edge guard they come in all these different sizes this can save you so much time if you are trying to paint around your flooring or something like that and also another tip that i have is that if you're trying to paint your window trim or paint around your windows you can just paint straight onto them. I know it sounds scary. I didn't want to do it at first, but you can paint straight onto them and then just use a scraper to get the paint off. It's actually really satisfying and so much quicker than trying to perfectly tape your windows off. So those are all the tips and tricks that I have for today's video. If you guys are interested in a part two, make sure to comment down below and like this video and maybe I'll make another one because I have all sorts of ideas. <laughs> if you watched all the way to the end, thank you so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Make sure to check out my TikTok if you want to see me posting almost daily on there. Bye!